Captain Zornith of the Cravian Imperial Fleets stood on the bridge of his command ship, gazing out the main viewport at the pale blue planet below. Earth. For months his fleet had been battling the troublesome humans, seeking to conquer their world and add it to the growing Cravian Empire. Yet the humans refused to submit. Outgunned and outmatched by the mighty Cravian war machine, still they fought on with a tenacity Zornith had never before encountered. Their cities burned, their fleets lay in ruins, and still the humans fought. Such spirit demanded respect. But soon it would be broken. Status report Zornith barked to his second in command. Our forces have taken control of most major population centers across the planet came the reply. Resistance continues but is disorganized and ineffective. Human leadership appears to have gone into hiding. This was excellent news. With their command structure shattered, it was only a matter of time before the last embers of defiance were stamped out. And what of their remaining military forces Zornith inquired? Mainly neutralized, though some units continue guerrilla strikes against our occupation forces. We are mopping them up systematically. Zornith clicked his mandibles in satisfaction. At long last, his great crusade to take Earth and enslave humanity was nearly complete. The Cravian Empire would swell with the manpower and resources of this lush world. Sir, we are receiving a transmission from the planet's surface called out his communications officer. It is the human leader, requesting to open negotiations for surrender. Ah, even the proudest will eventually bend the knee when the weight of utter defeat lies heavy upon them. Put him through Zornith ordered. A hollow image flickered into life on the bridge. An elderly human male, his face etched with weariness. I am Arthur Chambers, President of the United Earth Alliance, he began. On behalf of all humanity, I formally surrender to the forces of the Cravian Empire. We can resist no longer. The words seemed to pain him. Zornet's mandibles clicked in satisfaction. You are wise to know when you are beaten, human. The Empire will be magnanimous in victory. Your people will be spared the destruction you so clearly cannot withstand. Cravian occupation forces will maintain order as Earth is transitioned into our Imperial fold. Chambers lowered his eyes. We understand and will comply. I have issued orders for all human military forces to lay down their arms and cease fighting immediately. We ask only that you direct your forces to protect major population centers and critical infrastructure to ensure a smooth transition process. It shall be done, Zornith declared. Finally, the human nuisance would be dealt with and Cravian rule assured. A historic day for the Empire indeed. Over the next several days, Cravian regiments took up positions in all major human cities and settlements. Enormous garrison ships descended from orbit, disgorging tens of thousands of troopers. They fanned out through sprawling urban landscapes, establishing checkpoints and command centers. Resistance was light and uncoordinated. Isolated bands of stubborn humans kept up their fruitless defiance, but they posed no threat to Cravian dominion. From the Central Cravian Command Complex in the city of New York, Field Marshal's Rex supervised the consolidation of Cravian authority across Earth. The occupation was proceeding flawlessly. Billions of humans had been pacified under the watchful eyes of Cravian soldiers. Now the long process of assimilation could begin. Aides rushed into his command center clutching data slates. Field Marshal, we are receiving alarming reports from across many sectors, one gasped. Cravian patrols are coming under sustained attacks throughout urban centers across the planet. Zrex seized a data slate and scanned through the torrent of incoming reports. Ambushes. Sabotage. Cravian casualties mounting rapidly. How is this possible? The humans were utterly defeated, he thundered. But the truth soon became horribly apparent. The surrender had been a ruse, carefully staged to draw the core of the Cravian occupying force into dense urban terrain. And now, unleashed across Earth's sprawling cities, long-prepared networks of human resistance fighters were rising up to strike. Cravian regiments found themselves under relentless assault from all sides, lured into endless ambushes in a bewildering maze of buildings and underground passages. Key infrastructure was sabotaged, isolating Cravian units from support and command. The skies themselves turned against the Cravians, as concealed human missile teams wreaked havoc on dropships and gunships. The Cravians had expected broken, passive civilians. Instead, they found themselves fighting seasoned soldiers on their home terrain. Field Marshal's Rex slammed a fist down in rage as casualty reports climbed higher. 
but there was no time for anger. He had to salvage this disaster. Emergency orders went out to all Cravian units to retreat and regroup in reinforced positions and engage siege protocols. Perhaps they could ride out this storm. But as Cravian forces withdrew, the human attacks became even more aggressive. Makeshift barricades blocked every artery into the city center. Entire city blocks went dark as power systems were targeted. Smoldering dropships littered streets and rooftops. The anticipated safe havens never materialized, every fallback point ambushed in turn. Disciplined Cravian legionnaires dissolved into chaos, fleeing before the nightmare onslaught of the human horde. From the towering spire of the command complex, Zrex watched his orderly garrisons disintegrate street by street, reduced to ruin by the raging human tide. How? How had they concealed such strength after months of grueling warfare? Even now, Kravian heavy weapons platforms poured devastating fire into buildings housing the resistance, yet still they came, surging from subterranean tunnels like vicious insects from their hives. The reports from other cities across Earth were grimly similar Kravian forces in disarray, human fighters inexorably claiming their city's back block by bloody block. There would be no escape, no relief. The trap had closed. Zrex knew now in the depths of his hearts that Kravia's great conquest had failed. Captain Zornith strode through the corridors of his command ship, rage growing with each new disaster reported planetside. Curse these humans and their deceit. His grand victory had turned abruptly into impending catastrophe. Down on those tangled streets, thousands of his troops were dying by the hour, fighting desperately against an enemy that knew every corner and shadow. He entered the bridge, issuing crisp orders. Full orbital bombardment began immediately. We will burn these wretched humans from their hiding holes. But to his dismay, the weapons officers signaled that they were unable to comply. Our systems have been disabled, sir. Some kind of hidden virus in the network. Impossible Zornith thundered. Sir, dropping rapidly into Earth orbit came a new report. Thrusters non-responsive. We've lost control of navigation systems. The bridge officers worked frantically to regain command of the massive ship, but to no avail. The human-designed cyber weapon had done its work. Locked into a decaying orbit, the dreadnought began skimming into the upper atmosphere, friction glow enveloping its vast hull. All hands abandoned ship Zornith ordered. Disciplined to the last, the bridge crew marched to the escape pods and launched away. Zornith stood alone on the bridge, mandibles tightening as he watched the Earth loom larger in the viewport outmaneuvered by these humans at every turn. Perhaps they were worthy adversaries after all. Your spirit has earned my respect, he uttered quietly as flaming fragments of his once mighty command ship rained down across the Americas. The chamber of leadership was hushed as President Chambers watched the ongoing reports from Earth and above it. Haggard military advisors huddled around tactical displays. The ruse had worked, but at terrible cost. Much of Earth's urban landscape had been reduced to rubble by months of orbital bombardment, and fierce fighting continued to rage across every inhabited area. Victory was far from assured. Energy cascades detected across multiple Cravian warships in low orbit reported an advisor. Their systems are being disrupted just as planned. One by one across Earth's skies, Cravian capital ships succumbed to hidden malware and lost power and navigation. They drifted, then fell, joining the carcasses of Cravian legions piling up below. Chambers closed his eyes, allowing himself a grim smile. Their desperate gambit was succeeding. By hiding key military assets and developing secret cyber warfare capabilities following the surrender, humanity had completely reversed the course of the war once the Cravians were drawn into Earth's great cities. We're detecting Cravian retreats on all fronts another advisor called out. Their remaining ground forces are pulling back to higher orbit. Around chambers, fatigued faces broke into jubilant grins. The Cravian occupiers were fleeing before the wrath of Earth's people. For too long, humanity had ignored the darkness lurking between the stars. They had been naive, weak, no longer. The fires of unity and defiance had been lit. Humanity would rebuild and expand to the stars with newfound vigilance. Never again would they be caught off guard in their own world. The advisor returned to chambers' side, his expression grim. The final tally of casualties is still coming in, but current projections he paused, steadying himself. We've lost over a hundred million civilians in the Cravian bombardment. 
and military casualties are extremely heavy as well. Our major cities will take decades to rebuild. Chambers nodded solemnly, the sense of victory dimming. Then let us honor their sacrifice by securing lasting peace. There is hard work ahead. The advisor straightened with renewed resolve. Humanity endures, Mr. President, and we rise stronger than ever. Chambers turned to look out the sweeping vista of rubble that had once been Washington, D.C. Fire still burned, but the sounds of battle had faded. We do endure. We always have. High above, the last Cravian ships still clinging to orbit saw the smoke rising from a thousand points across Earth's surface. Their prize of conquest had slipped through their grasp, turning at the last moment into a grinder of Cravian bones. Their time here was over. As the Cravian fleet withdrew in failure from Earth space, they looked down upon the small blue world with newfound caution. Here was a people who had faced Armageddon and emerged bloodied but unbowed. Across the Gulf of Stars, word would spread through Cravian space of the dangers of this unassuming planet called Earth, and the remarkable beings called humans whose enduring spirit could never be broken.